調整カタクリ Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 One Piece character introductions. Number 10. How was he? How was he? I remember that. Did Kogus make the top 10? The elderly man has hair like his flowery namesake and some This was a funny intro though. Major characters. Fuck it. When most of the crew yeah, this was funny. by a whale, they're startled to find Crocus relaxing on an island inside the great beast. <laughs> oh, we thought he was talking big shit. <laughs> his intense fan with the crew, as well as his blithe comedic responses to their questions about who he is and where they are, are the stuff of comedic gold. This shit was funny. That shit was funny. A running gag to its fullest potential. Nigga says someone would die. <laughs> Number nine. Hey, crazy enough, we later found out that nigga was on the <laughs> ship of the Pirate King. That shit is crazy. One Piece is so fucking full circle, bro. I loved it. I love this fucking show. While every member of the Straw Hats gets a great introduction, few of them are quite as unique as Brooks. The crew is in the spooky Florian Triangle, which is full of ghost ships. When they come across a singing skeleton with an afro, they're instantly unnerved. Except for Luffy, of course. <laughs> Upon meeting him, though, Brook proves to be a cheerful, if perverted, member of the undead. In addition to whether he can poop, Luffy has a very important question for Brook. Will he join Luffy's crew? This nigga asked like four people to join his crew that, that are... <laughs> Brooke's nonchalant acceptance is almost as hilarious as everyone else's reaction to the news. Of course, Brooke joining wasn't that simple, but right from the jump, he proves he belongs with the Straw Hats. You playing the fuck out them keys. My nigga. Ace makes a brief appearance during the Drum Island arc. His first proper introduction is in a bar in Alabasta. The scene is first comedic as Ace seems to have died, but is merely asleep in his food. <laughs> Then things turn serious when Smoker shows up, revealing his nigga. to Whitebeard and that he's Luffy's older brother. Finally, it's funny again when Luffy makes a dramatic and hilarious entrance. <laughs> Ace then has a reunion with his little bro, revealing his fiery devil fruit powers, and gets to meet Luffy's crew. As far as first introductions go, this one has a little bit of everything and firmly establishes Ace as an entertaining and cool character. Ace. Number 7, Kuzan, aka Aokiji. This was cold. Never know who no pun intended. Will run into on their journey. One of the most surprising is the lanky, lazy Oh, I'm and shitting herself, family. boy. Turns out he's Marine Admiral Aokiji, whose real name is Kuzan. <laughs> Aokiji immediately terrifies the nigh unflappable Robin, and the rest of the crew soon learns why. Ice Age. <laughs> Gangster, bro. The Admiral's ice powers are enough to freeze a whole section of ocean, and he soon proves invulnerable to the attacks of every member of the crew. <laughs> After freezing Robin solid, he easily hands Luffy one of his only complete defeats. While the Marines are a threat throughout One Piece, Aokiji is the first major indication of how terrifying they can be. Soretomo. Ooh, this nigga was live, bro. The Straw Hat Pirates are the only big names making their mark in the Grand Line. When the crew reaches the Sabari Archipelago, they're informed that nine of their peers have also attained bounties over 100 million and are at the same location, too. We have been in the Sabari Archipelago. 
11人1億ベリーを超える賞金組がいるわ We're treated to a rapid fire introduction of these powerful rookie pirates. Seeing their bounties, unique designs, and some of their abilities is a real treat. But it's the way they all showcase their personalities and bounce off each other that makes their collective introduction truly fantastic. <laughs> some of their interactions in these little snippets have big payoffs later down the road. It's tough to make a flood of new characters work this well, but One Piece pulls it off beautifully. Oh my. Number 5. Mihawk. Yo. Guys, Mihawk is Stepping on big shit. Swordsman in the world. Built up as a man Zoro is searching for, Mihawk debuts when he is responsible for the Greek's pirate fleet. Because he was bored, Mihawk pursues Greek to East Blue and slices up his enormous flagship like it's nothing. Zoro challenges Hawkeyes to a duel, and the Warlord further cements his incredible skill and power by toying with East Blue's best swordsman. So disrespectful, bro. So disrespectful. He also gives him a horrendous scar as well. Mihawk sets the bar high for the seven warlords, as well as for Grand Line characters in general. He gives us a taste of the peak of One Piece power, and it's incredible even now. Number four, Silver's Rayleigh. After the Straw Hats meet Shaggy, the bartender hypes up the supernovas plenty, but then she claims her man Rayleigh is a hundred times stronger than all of them. And if anything, she was downplaying that figure. Soon afterwards, when Kami is captured, one of her captors is knocked out by a then mysterious force. We pan over to see an old man drinking in a cell next to a giant, the latter of whom accuses the other of using Haki. While the old guy claims to just be an old coating mechanic, the caption that appears reveals that he's Silver's Rayleigh, former first mate to the Pirate King Gold Roger. What a legendary way to introduce this living legend. <laughs> Number 3, Marshall D. Teach, aka Blackbeard. At a bar on Jaya, Luke okay. sits next to a large, unshaven man, whom he quickly finds himself comedically at odds with. Both have the exact opposite taste in food and drink. That's so crazy, bro. This is their introduction to each other. That's crazy. One of the biggest antagonists in the show. It's insane. The fight nearly breaks out, it's soon diffused. Luffy does get into a fight with another pirate, but outside, Teach gives Luffy a rousing speech about pursuing your dreams. <laughs> Later, after learning how much Luffy is worth, we learn the truth. This seemingly random guy is Blackbeard, the pirate Luffy's brother Ace has been pursuing. Not only that, other background characters from around town are part of his crew too. It's an incredibly creative way of introducing one of the series' main villains with humor, inspiration, and a crazy twist. <laughs> so long ago, bro. That's crazy. Number two, Borsellino, aka Kizaru. Out of all the Marines, Borsellino or Kizaru has the best introduction. Another one of the admirals, Kizaru is called in to resolve an incident at Saburi instigated by Luffy. To start, Kizaru rides in on a cannonball like a badass. Then he illustrates his incredibly powerful light powers by destroying one of the massive mangroves of the archipelago with a single kick. Finally, he makes short work of four of the supernovas gathered there. Thanks. 
Hizaru's slow speech pattern and absent-mindedness are hilarious, but also contrast perfectly with his frightening speed and power. It's a phenomenal antagonist introduction, but not quite One Piece's best. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kaido All the character debuts leave an Facts. impact, but only Kaido Facts. does it literally. Facts. <laughs> First seen as a shadowed figure on a sky island, Kaido leaps off of it as the narrator describes his desire to die, as well as the highlights of his life. How every attempt to kill him has failed, that he has been captured by the marines many times, yet always escaped. <laughs> And as he picks himself up out of the Kaido-shaped crater and towers over three supernovas, we learn that Kaido is considered the strongest creature on Earth, on land, sea, or in the air. This personification of strength on steroids, this unstoppable... This nigga kid shitting himself. Luffy picked a fight with him. Oh, crap. Isogizuke! Saigo no Sento Janbyu! Totonoiro! What's your favorite One Piece introduction? Let us know in those comments below. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo. Mm. Alright, so I'm gonna throw out some honorable mentions. Uh, first honorable mention, I'm gonna say my nigga Odin. Odin who was first seen cooking up some Odin over the grave site of, well, at the funeral of one of his close friends, literally eating Odin in a pot over that dead man's body at the funeral, which had people pissed off, but by the time he gave his speech, everybody loved him. That shit was insane. Um, next, honorable mention, gonna be Green Bull. Nigga showed up to Wano big and bad. We thought he was about to step on shit. We thought he was gonna be that nigga taking on uh, all of o taking on all of Odin's uh, you know young samurai, shitting on him, shitting on uh, Odin's son, shitting on him, and then it all came to an end when this nigga Shanks just gave him a look fifty miles away from the coast, just glanced at that nigga. Had him shitting on himself because of his conqueror's hockey. That was a memorable introduction to say the least. Um, let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Put it in the comment section below. Till next time, peace. I'm just venting.